Hey guys, before we get this party started, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Live Nation and the Fillmore Denver. Without them, none of this would be possible. And without this episode, I don't think we'd be where we are today. But before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our fans over at the Fillmore Denver. They have a locked and loaded lineup coming up for not only today and tomorrow with Miss Lizzo, but we have a day to remember this weekend. And then after that, next week, we have Marilyn Manson on the 28th. If you're not following along with these guys on social media, follow them at Fillmore Den, D-E-N, and at Live Nation CO on Instagram and Facebook. So you're up to date on all the show releases, ticket giveaways, swag bags, and more. And then also don't forget to jump on the www.livenation.com website to get tickets to things like Lotus, Young Thug, The Roots. We got The Last Waltz. We have a pretty full docket for not only November, but for December as well. So make sure you guys are following along to those guys, both online and then checking out the Live Nation website as well. Without further ado, let's start this party and shout out to our friend Cassidy, who is our guest this week for a great, hilarious episode of Miss Midwestern Antics. of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip workers, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Three, two, one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Stone Appetit. With your hosts, as always, it's me, Kip. To my right, I have Oh Boy Bama. Bama, how are you? I mean, we're at our home. We're on yeah. our home turf. Yeah, so we're uh, we're coming to you from our home studio here at the Stone Petit World Headquarters. We got the crew here hanging out on the big couch. We got folks looking, folks watching, and it's probably because our guest this week is a pretty big name person here, and not only the local community, but also in the social media world as well. Huge. I want to introduce Miss Cassidy Eats to the uh, the podcast this evening. Cassidy, how are you this evening? I'm doing great. I uh, I came over to Kip and Chris's and they just fed me, and I'm ready to. Kip and Chris's out. home office headquarters. Oh yes. Please. Not many people have gotten that invite, so very few. Especially on a Sunday, like this is a special day. I, I already said I feel lucky. I'm excited to be here. Okay, I'm just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, I think she makes the third person to record from our home studio, which is we had lot gossip, dank eats, and now Cassidy. I forgot so, we did have lot gossip. So it's been a nice run. It's a very uh, yeah. prestigious group. Well, the one thing so. you didn't consider is you're getting Sunday Cassidy too for this interview. Is Sunday Cassidy better than the other six days? I would say so. Oh, no. <laughs> Lucky guy. So this, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we do have we have some uh, we have some of her following. Uh, she does have a loyal group, and we're going to dive into all of that. We have uh, a big episode in store for y'all. We're going to get into uh, how we know Cassidy. Um, Cassidy is very well known on the internet world across the uh, the nation. She has a polarizing engagement with her following, and. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. So we're going to get some, some tips as we just clipped the 10K Club. We're going to get a tips from Cassie on how to grow it further. And then we're going to pick in the nitty gritty of uh, Midwestern lifestyle, casseroles and things of that nature. <laughs> yeah, cream and mushroom and just Fucking, bacon and Crisco yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. But we got to give a shout out to you for getting us to that 10K mark. I think you were, <laughs> I think you were a strategic play there and. We'll get to it the works. social media strategy later. I'll give you guys some tips. Yeah, okay. so for those listening, stay to the <laughs> end where she gives the best tips at the end, um, just like everyone does. Um, nice. What's it called? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, before we get this party started, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, Live Nation and the Fillmore Denver. Without them, none of this would be possible. For those that are listening, we got Marilyn Manson coming up. We have a fucking full docket in November. Uh, everything from the last waltz, but we got lettuce, lotus, and everything in between. Thievery, Ghostland. I mean, it's a fucking gauntlet. Oh, and 
Lizzo. Fucking yes. We're going to Lizzo tonight. Yeah. To, yeah, well, for those yeah, listening. Yeah, I mean, we're doing this on Sunday, but we're going yes. to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those listening on our yeah. Tuesday, um, yeah, stay these, tuned tonight. These two are headed to uh, Lizzo. On, I am on so excited to go to Lizzo with Bama. You guys, this is going to be the best night ever. He looked me in the eyes the other day and said, we're going to brown bag it down Colfax to the Fillmore, and we're going to have ourselves a Tuesday. So I am yeah. looking forward to yeah. it. You can grab a 24-ounce Modelo brown bag by the time you get to the Fillmore. It's I've gone. also never been to the Fillmore, so I'm just really excited. This is one to, way to pop your cherry, I'm, that is for sure. I, I know. It is the, sold out. Yeah, <laughs> so it is. It's sold out. So we, And that's a thanks to our friends Mel and the team over at Live Nation. Without them, not only would y'all be with, stuck with your thumb up your ass, but at the same time, we'd also be stuck with our thumb up our ass if it wasn't for them. So we appreciate everything y'all do for us. For those that are curious, go follow them at Fillmore Den, D-E-N, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary, so they're uh, bringing out all the big names, all the big acts, and it's always a big time. So go follow Fillmore Denver and then at Live Nation CO as well. Um, let's get this party started. Chris, yeah, you, know how we, you know how to start it. Do it. So, Cassidy, are you a transplant or a native? I am definitely a transplant. Where were you transplanted from? I was born and raised in Ottawa, Illinois. Where the fuck is that? Is that in Canada? That's, that is the number one response I get, so all my Ottawans who are listening to this will appreciate that. Uh, no, it's about 80 miles southwest of Chicago. A lot of crime. And, and this isn't the <laughs> south side. I don't know. In Chicago? Or <laughs> I mean, you're only eight miles away. So 80. Did you say eight? 80. Eight zero. Eight, eight zero. Maybe your town's a big like. I don't know how far you think the Chicago crime spreads, but um, <laughs> we were riding guess. in trucks and shooting bucks in Ottawa, Illinois. We are not dealing with a lot of crime. Are you a good shot? I actually am. Did you have testicles on the back of your truck growing up? Yeah. That was the first thing I wanted on my Jetta when I got my first car. I was like, I need a pair of testes on my classic body. Midwestern car, Jetta. Yeah. yeah, I was. You said trucks, so I was thinking of you know those people that have like the brass ball sitting on the bottom. So I wasn't sure if that was one of you. Uh, like on the trailer. You must be speaking from memory. Is that your truck? No, I didn't have a truck. I had a '91 Volvo, and it was a pile of shit. Oh God, I don't even want to know how many chicks you tried to pick up in that thing. None. I mean, literally, I had to get people to like jump my car off after school. I killed mean, them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like one of the, what's the car, I don't know what the movie is where you have to, oh, well, what's the fucking movie with the little girl that dances and... Oh, uh, Luna Sunshine. Yeah, you know, we have to push the van to get it started. Yeah, yeah. My Volvo was eerily similar to that, so it was, in fact, the exact opposite of uh, a pussy magnet. <laughs> if that's we already word. talked about a movie, and we're only like five minutes in. Yeah, so we do a lot of movie quotes yeah, for those that are say, tuning in. Normal episode of Stone Deputies. Yeah, but for, I mean, you have a lot of listener or followers, so obviously when you told everyone that you are going to be on this, I'm sure they all start subscribing and rating and reviewing. Please don't rate us one star after what we do to Cassidy here today. We're about to bit make fun. So yeah. we'll do some movies. We're going to ask you a little bit of the nitty gritty. Okay. How was Ottawa, Illinois, uh, Iowa growing up? How oh, many people were in your high God, school? You already messed this up. Ottawa, Illinois. Oh, sorry. Ottawa, Illinois. Illinois and sorry. Iowa are two different places. Okay, yeah. I forget because don't you... Don't offend the, the Midwesterners, man. They all are the same. It's like green bean casserole and like stuffing, and that's about a shitty running football. That's about I, all it is. I am sitting in this room As long as you put the crunchy right onions on top, you're going... two other Midwesterners in addition to myself, so you clearly surround yourself with the best of them, and so if we were raised on corn eating casseroles, like, we're the good people, okay? Technically, four of y'all... If you count uh, the old Rust Belt, uh, Pat, or uh, Dick Black over there. Oh, right. Pat from Ohio, yeah. Well, his uh, his alter ego, because he has joined us on this podcast, is Richard Black. So. Oh, Richard Black is from Ohio, in case anyone is trying to find him. No, they know who he is. Oh, okay. yeah, it's dangerous. But okay, so. How was growing up in Ottawa, yeah. Illinois? Um, it was good. I was raised in a family where I was the only girl. All of my cousins were boys. And my mom was a teacher, so in the summer she watched myself and all of my cousins. It was a ruckus <laughs> at the Franklin house. We called it Club Franklin. We had a pool. All the cousins were over, all boys, and me. It's kind of like having all these dogs here tonight. Pretty much. Nice. I'm used to it. I go right at home. So did you play, like, baseball and basketball and, like, develop this, like, affinity for sports and, like, you could beat other dudes' ass in the sports? I, I don't know why you have that like, feeling. I felt like that Are you would an be an athlete. Yes. So. Yeah, usually like because like when they grew up, they're like, 
my sisters were tougher because they grew up with a bunch of boys, yeah. and now they've excelled much better than we all have, and it's because they, they're better yeah. athletes. Um, so I started with, uh, I did dance from a very early age, so I was always in ballet and stuff like that, but I played baseball with the boys. Yeah. Um, but I, like, was never really interested in the sports element. Like, I thought it was so fun to, like, be with a bunch of your friends. So I remember daring this one kid to, like, lick the moss on the ground. And I was like, hey, in the dugout. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck yeah. Classic way to pass the time during yeah. the baseball game. <laughs> Boring as shit. So um, I played with the boys, but then I switched over to softball. I played basketball in high school as well. Um, I tried volleyball for a little bit. That was fun. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not very competitive. Like, I got in trouble I, in high school when I was on the varsity basketball team for cracking a joke in the locker room after we lost. And what was, was the joke? I don't even remember. It was just some wisecrack like, hey, like, at least we're going to Culver's after this. Was it a Hitler like joke? Huh. Culver screaming? Yeah. <laughs> we have one of those down in the springs. God, this is so Midwest. Um, We're going what you to see is what you get. Yeah. I, I feel like you would have been a ferocious basketball player. Like throwing bows and shit. I could have seen that. Um, she does yeah. a little, she's a little sparky. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we used to live in Low High and we used to play on the courts at Avanti a lot. And I, I, I play with, like, all the guys, and I think they're kind of like, oh, she thinks this is funny because I'm always smiling. Like, I always have a shit-eating grin on my face. But then I'll just pull, like, an up and under, and then everyone's like, whoa, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do this if I feel like Wait, what it. what the but fuck's an up and under? You guys don't even know about basketball and you're asking me about it? I didn't say anything about <laughs> basketball. Yeah, I know we don't. We're from the South. I mean, I know about crossovers and whatnot. Yeah, that, pretty but, much that. Okay. Anyway, anyone who knows basketball listening will know what I meant. Okay. Up uh, and then under. I'll, I'll show you sometime. Did Larry Bird come out of those parts? Indiana State, I believe. Indiana, not Illinois. Well, okay, so you went from Ottawa, and then I believe, I mean, I've seen from your Instagram stories, and for those that don't know, it's at Cassidy Eats. I mean, you you have a very prominent account, but you you wear a lot of uh, Iowa swag. So did you go to you call it college there and then come to Colorado? Yes. So I went to the University of Iowa to be a high school English teacher. <laughs> Those are the dogs we have at the headquarters. Yeah, we all, party over we here. love the dogs. We love them all. Um, I graduated, moved back to Illinois, and was working at a brewery. Um, Kai was there, so we were we were dating at the time. And oh, hold on, was was Kai working at the brewery? No. Uh, Kai's not that cool. Oh, I thought we had a classic situation of you know dip in the pen and company ink no and i was working on. at distill which is a great brewery they sell their beer out here if you guys ever see it um it's out of illinois um anyway so i was figuring out the teaching license thing in illinois at isu illinois state and then i was like this sucks i think i should move to colorado and so why didn't you choose like most folks i feel like in the midwest they all kind of flock to chicago what made you choose denver over chicago because i am not a city person i have i like chicago i like visiting chicago i like being there but the energy there is just is way too much for me and then denver denver is such a chill Den, denver is my vibe denver is my people what's your vibe a city that's not a city yeah Find yourself how would you guys describe denver in comparison to other larger cities. I'm interested. So, like, we, I didn't No, live. it is funny. It feels like it could be any other city I've ever been to. Like, it's not intimidating. It's not big. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's yeah. not big, but... It's probably it's the least time, intimidating big city. You find busy patches, and you see them on the interstate, then you see them at the restaurants and bars, that it's getting busier while not feeling that... Big of a city, right? Would be the way I would yeah, describe it. Yeah, but you it. cannot be the people of the city. No, I don't mind anybody in the city. I like everybody. Um, what's it called? I don't have any issues with any of the homeless folks or any of the bars or people. Well, I don't like the folks that hang out on Blake Street. We've made that point, man. <laughs> so, we don't do Lodo. We're not Lodo folks. Although I guess the Union Station area. Yeah. That counts. Um, yeah, but that's a separate thing. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't I didn't want to go to Chicago because I just never saw myself there. I didn't Way fucking cold too. First of all, I never liked the idea of having to wear like a pantsuit and I felt like if I worked in Chicago and I'd have to wear like heels to work and like a pantsuit and like a just a whole thing that I felt uncomfortable and stiff all day, like that was not the life that I wanted, you know? I get new pantsuits? No. I, yeah, I just pictured Karen from the office when you like, said Like totally. That. Yeah. I I wasn't sure exactly if that was what you would have to wear, but it is weird like here in Denver 
Denver, you, if someone's wearing a suit, it's like, look at this dick. He's either like a, a trial attorney or a fucking bank. Yeah. So you know, like, I, I don't want to talk to those people. So. If-